हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इंटीग्रेटेड फिजिक्स स्टडीज आईपीएस एस एम ऑलरेडी प्लस टू सेकेंड इयर सिलेबस कंप्लीट कर सारी एवं मुझे प्लस थ्री सी बी सी एस अनलाइन क्लासेस भिडियोज गुड़ा अपलोड करी जदि भल लगे तेल लाइक करदेव और सब्सक्राइब करदेव जो भिडियोज गुड़ा मुझे अपलोड करी तार नोटिफिकेसन ये बेल आइकन को अल्रे सेट करदेव गोटे इंपोर्टे जिनस भिडियोज जो थ्री डट्स देखु तार क्वाटी ये देख बै डिफल्ट थ्री सिक्सटी अच्छी तुम ताक पढ़े कर क्लिक कर तुम रिजल्यूशन प्रति वीडियो जरे मु पीडीएफ लिंक देवी ताकु एटी ड्रॉप डाउन लिस्ट को तमे क्लिक करी डाउनलोड मध्य करी परबो पीडीएफ को लास्ट रे एटी जो मोर चैनल नेम अछि याकु क्लिक करी तमे एटी प्लेलिस्ट को जाई मु प्रति वीडियोस को यूनिट वाइज एज पर सिलेबस सो जे कि रखेतिबे तमे सर्च करी परबो ओके थैंक यू हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आज रो टॉपिक रे हमें स्कैनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी विषय रे पढिबा इन शॉर्ट एसईएम which is a tool for the characterization of nano structures now a scanning electron microscope actually produces image of a sample by scanning it hence the name scanning electron microscope and it scan with a focused beam of electrons now the image which is produced consist of variation as a function of probe position of some signal which is generated by the sample under the probe right now the interaction of the electrons with that of the atoms of the sample will produce various signals okay so the electrons will interact with the atoms of the sample and thereby produce various signal which contain information about the surface topography of the sample and also about the sample composition right now various signals are produced by a scanning electron microscope these are namely secondary electrons in short se then reflected or back scattered electrons in short bse then number 3 photons of characteristic x rays or light and number 4 absorbed current that is specimen current and transmitted electrons okay now the specimen in the sem should be completely dry right and the samples in an sem can be solid or bulk specimen having any size that will fit within the specimen chamber obviously okay so you have to place the specimen inside or within the specimen chamber now the specimen can be studied in low vacuum high vacuum wet condition and at a wide range of very low or elevated temperatures so you can vary all these criteria right so both conductive and non conductive samples can be studied with the help of a sem and this scanning electron microscope can achieve a resolution better than 1 nanometer right a very narrow electron beam is actually used in sem and it will result in a large depth of field of scanning electron microscope with micrographs images right now let us go further let us see the construction part of this scanning electron microscope or sem so the basic principle of sem is shown in the figure with its schematic diagram okay so this is the figure मुझे आपको आउट के छोटो कर दो जी, right? So this is the figure of your scanning electron microscope. In the right side you can see at the top we have the electron gun, okay, which is fitted with a tungsten filament के थोड़, so from which we can have the electron beam which are emitted thermionically, right? And here the tungsten material is used for making the cathode because of its suitability because it has high melting point and low vapor pressure and also it has low cost okay so this is some of the favorable region in making tungsten as a material of the filament cathode right thereafter the electron beam will pass through a set of condenser lenses first and second okay so condenser lens is used for focusing this electron beam into a narrow spot okay so you can see 
this will focus the electron beam into a very narrow spot okay thereafter we have pairs of scanning coils or deflector plates okay so deflector plates or scanning coils or deflection coils will do what it will deflect the electrons okay it will deflect the electrons in x or y direction okay so that what will happen the electron beam will scan the sample which is placed at the bottom okay in a raster fashion okay raster fashion fashion means suppose in television you can see or in case of your cathode ray tube you have rectangular image okay rectangular image which are formed by very closed lines okay very closed lines so this is also same type the sample which is taken to be rectangular so that we will have rectangular pattern of image capture okay and this reconstruction is called raster scanning okay so the raster fashion imaging is run over the rectangular area of the sample surface right thereafter the electrons are detected okay they will go in this direction and these electrons can be detected by means of suppose your x-ray detector then also you have secondary electron detector right so a number of detectors such as secondary electron detector x-ray detector also back scatter electron detector can be used as a part of scanning electron microscope and these detectors are used to receive various signals which are emitted from a scanning electron microscope when the energetic beam of electrons will fall over this sample or specimen okay now on the left side we have the simplified figure okay from which we can see the electron beam is emerging from the electron gun then the condenser lens is focusing it and thereby it is striking the sample okay from the sample we have the secondary electron which are being detected by the detector okay so this is your construction part let us now see the working part of this scanning electron microscope so in working actually a scanning electron microscope combines the ease of operation of an optical microscope and the analysis capacity of a TEM that is your transmission electron microscope so in a typical scanning electron microscope an electron beam is thermionically emitted from an electron gun which is fitted with a tungsten filament cathode as we have seen in the figure above now this cathode is electrically heated okay obviously we have to heat the filament cathode so that it will emit electrons thermionically right so for this suppose we take low energy around 0.2 kilo electron volt to 40 kilo electron volt then the electron beam is focused by one or two condenser lenses into a spot which is around 0.4 to 5 nanometer in diameter and this focused beam of electrons is then passed through a system of magnetic lenses which are used for the deflection of the beam in the x and y direction okay so that a rectangular area of the surface of the sample is scanned by the electron beam and the resulting image which we are getting is a distribution map of the intensity of the signal being emitted from the scanned area right now the energy exchange between the electron beam and the specimen will give rise to reflection of high energy electrons by elastic scattering then emission of secondary electrons by inelastic scattering and emission of electromagnetic radiation that is your x-ray okay so various interaction between electron beam and sample and the signals which are produced therein are shown in the figure okay so these are shown point wise in detail okay so you can see in figure the electron beam interaction and the signal produced which are like your characteristic x-rays then 
we have photon then auger electrons then incident electrons which are the primary one then back scattered electrons then secondary electrons and this is obviously this one is the surface of the specimen or sample so all these types of detection modes are here being discussed point wise in detail okay so you can study it for your knowledge purpose otherwise you can simply write the name of the detection modes okay one by another okay so you can see first one was your secondary electron imaging then second one was your back scattered electron then the third one which is the characteristic x-ray fourth one cathode luminescence okay so you can write it simply name wise or point wise okay now let us see the magnification or the magnifying power of the SEM that is your scanning electron microscope here the magnification results from the ratio of the dimension of the raster on the specimen and the raster on the display device okay so keeping the display screen at a fixed size and higher magnification results from reducing the size of the raster on the specimen and vice versa okay so the magnification can be controlled by the current which is supplied to the xy scanning coils or to the voltage which is supplied to the xy deflector plates and image magnification in an sem does not depend upon the power of the objective lens okay and thereafter if we see the resolution in case of your sem actually the spatial resolution depends on the size of the electron spot which is focused okay which is focused by the condenser lenses so this in turn depends on both the wavelength of electrons and the electron optical system which produce the scanning beam okay so the resolution is also limited by the volume of the specimen material which interacts with the electron beam that is the interaction volume now the spot size and the interaction volume are both large as compared to the distances between the atoms so the important point is here in case of sem the resolution is not high enough to image the individual atoms okay so you can say sem is having a less resolution as compared to the tem okay now let us see the application of this scanning electron microscope so in addition to the topographical morphological and compositional information sem can detect and analyze the surface fractures okay provide information in microstructures it can examine the surface contaminations then it can reveal the spatial variation in chemical composition okay so how much the variation is spatially in case of com chemical composition it can detect okay it can also provide qualitative chemical analysis and can identify the crystalline structures of a material okay sem can be used for the study of parasites and it can also be used as a research tool in case of your life sciences biology medical forensic science metallurgy then your physical science obviously okay scanning electron microscope can be used for the production of semiconductors and microchips for computer industry okay so this is very useful in your latest technology right now sem can observe bulk sample material up to several centimeters in size and is consequently more flexible in its application than that of your tem so although sem has less resolution or resolving power than that of your tem but its flexibility is more than your tem okay so let us see some of the advantages of sem number one it has wide array or wide range of application number two it has detailed 3d and topographical 
imaging capability so that it can image comparatively bulky objects number three it has fast and easy operation okay number four it can provide versatile information okay which can be obtained from different detectors okay number five the sample preparation is easy as compared to tem number six the data can be generated in digital form and number seven the interpretation of images is very easy okay so these are some of the advantages but however it has also some of the drawbacks or disadvantages number one SEMs are expensive right and they are large in size and they must be kept in an area which is free of any possible electric magnetic or vibrational interference okay Tapare, number two its maintenance cost is very high then number three in order to operate this SEM it required special training so it doesn't mean that anyone can operate this SEM okay a special training is required for its operation number four this is very important there is a risk of radiation exposure because of the scattered electrons and we know that whenever a human body is exposed to such radiation then it can create damage to the human cells or tissues okay which can lead to cells or tissue disorder and may lead to cancer okay so there is a risk of this radiation exposure then number five SEMs are limited to solid inorganic samples which are small enough to fit inside the vacuum chamber and which can handle moderate vacuum pressure okay so there is limitation involved in it then number six as we have discussed its resolution is limited to only few nanometer and finally number seven the details on the atomic level cannot be observed in case of SEM okay so this is all about your scanning electron microscopy okay besides this I have taken this scanning electron microscopy from another book where it has been discussed in a very brief way okay so I advise you for reading this one also for your knowledge purpose okay and you can prepare your note accordingly okay thank you